And staying in Albany now, Jacqueline Franchetti lost her daughter, Kira, about seven years ago. Before that, she was fighting for full custody of Kira, saying her father, who was out of the picture, was violent and dangerous. But a family court judge disagreed and allowed joint custody of Kira between Jacqueline and the father. Then, in 2016, Kira was shot and killed by the father, who then took his own life. And now, Jacqueline is pushing a bill called Kira's Law that she says could prevent future tragedies. Alexis Young has that story. Ask Kira's Law. Ask Kira's Law. Autumn Coleman is forever three years old. Devontae Paul will forever be six years old. Gabrielle White will forever be seven years old. Thomas Fava will, fee will forever be eight years old. Ava Wood will forever be 14 years old. My two-year-old daughter, Kira, is one of 23 children to be murdered by the parent while going through a custody case, divorce, or separation in New York State since 2016. This number doesn't even take into account the staggering number of children who are court-ordered into the home of an abusive parent. This is happening. Juliessa's grandmother begged them not to order Juliessa to her, back to her abusive mother, who had five other children removed from her home. Autumn's mother went to Queen's family court just two days before her daughter's murder to try and protect her little girl from her abusive father. In every courthouse, in every county, children are being court ordered into the home of a parent who is beating them, raping them, emotionally destroying them at staggering rates. And the re results are absolutely devastating. We need a judicial system, a court system that will protect our children, that will put their life and safety first. We need Kira's Law. I want to walk you through my custody case. Because like many of you, I walked into Nassau County Family Court the first day thinking that they would protect Kira. From the very first moment, I was on defense trying to protect myself and Kira and to keep her safe. I told the judge that I was being stalked, threatened, that I was a victim of domestic violence. And everyone knew from day one that he was suicidal. And the judge's response, she yelled at me to grow up. We had Child Protective Services involved in Kira's case. They noted that he had extreme anger and rage issues and an inability to care for her at a young age. And they labeled it low risk. We had a forensic evaluator, actually three, in Kira's case. They heard from eyewitnesses, saw documented evidence of the abuse. And in his report, he recommended joint custody because he said, quote unquote, a father should always play a role in a child's life. In a healthy breakup, I agree with that, but in an abusive one, absolutely not. This would be a very easy bill for me to come up here and start yelling and screaming and pointing fingers at judges. Simple, very easy. The public would understand. You have 23 dead kids. Kira should be alive. There are reasons for us to be able to do that, but we're not. We are now going to be uh, amending the current bill because we've had productive uh, conversations with the Office of Court Administration. I don't want to cast dispersions on them, but the system is gapped. My, um, my last memory of Kira, she had just learned to roll down a hill, and she took a couple of awkward tumbles down, and she got up and she said, I did it, Mama, I did it. And she was so proud of her latest accomplishment. And just a few days later, she was on a court-ordered visit with her abusive father. He shot her not once, but twice in the back while she slept. He then poured gasoline all over his home, and he murdered her in a murder-suicide. And Kira's murder was entirely preventable. She should never have been with him that day. And the murder of these 22 other children, also entirely preventable. We can end this with Kira's law. There's a real chance that before the end of the session, we will have a negotiated compromise with OCA mostly on board. The fact that even now, in 2023, when we're talking about the court having to look at the best interest of the child, that we actually have to write into the law that the first thing is the life and safety, it's surprising that we have to do that. Kira's law does 
three things essentially. First, it's going to make the state, the life and the safety of the child, the top priority in a custody case. So that if there is domestic violence in that household, if there's child abuse allegations in that household, it's it's a hard stop. The judge, the court must stop and contemplate what to do with that. Not, oh, well, there are a bunch of factors here. You know, as the hearings play out over the next many months, we'll consider those allegations. Second thing that this will do is it will mandate judge training. You know, the court system and some judges, uh, they're raising concerns and they don't have the time. And, and respectfully, I would argue, you wanna be a judge in New York State, this issue, these issues are so important. Uh, you can afford to spend a few more hours. And that's what we're talking about here, not hundreds of hours, a few more hours uh, learning how to best respond to these types of cases. And the third thing that Kira's Law will do is it stops common practices that allow abusers to gain custody at these staggering epidemic rates. The court would have a risk assessment form that they would have to develop and and put a custody case through because if they're on the record saying, okay, I don't believe this domestic violence uh, allegation, I don't believe this child abuse allegation, and then they continue with joint custody or unsupervised visitation, and something happens to that child, you better believe all the fingers are going to be pointing back at that judge. Kira didn't stand a chance in New York's family court system. She should be nine years old in April. And I see some of her friends, and you know, Kira's frozen in time for me at two years old, and I see how much they've grown. And I'll never know how, I'll never know what she wants to be when she grows up. I won't know who her best friends are. You know, <laughs> Christmas, people are gathering together. I'm at a grave site. Kira deserved to live. She deserves so much more. And she deserved a judicial system that would protect her, not one that failed her. And in a statement, a spokesperson for the State Office of Court Administration said, quote, until there is a final version of the bill for us to review, we do not have any opinion on it at this point. There is a version of the bill publicly available, but it would likely change after negotiations. We'll check back in with OCA if that happens.